Okay, so anyways, uh, thanks all to coming to this buff and I need to find some power for my laptop first. So, as I said before, I'm not giving a presentation. I'm not holding the hof. We are having a buff together on the Debian policy. Uh, so everyone who wants to move closer is very welcome too, because it's really something we do, do together, not something I'm speaking and you, and you, and you can uh, whatever work on your laptop instead on something else. Uh, so basically, why did, we, why did I schedule that buff? Uh, we have the Debian policy, which is, let's say, has been in a not too good maintenance status ever, I think, since I joined Debian or even before. I can't say about before. Uh, it had a few good times where things were working on. Basically, there are lots of things which should be done in policy. We could look at the bug list in the Debian policy. So basically, what happens if someone wants a change in policy, mostly an adjustment to what we're actually doing, uh, they should report it by BTS. People should second it, and if enough seconds, it should be incorporated. So things are work uh, sometimes working up to the stage of things are suggested. A few have even uh, seconds, but since a bit, uh, a bit of time again, uh, uh, basically after seconds, nothing happens. Um, what I would like to get from this uh, out from this buff is really uh, that we get it done again, at least for another whatever two or three years, so we can have another buff in three years. So that would be my plan of this buff. Uh, and I'm happy that at least a few people came here. And so my question really is, how, what could we do to improve our Debian policy processes to get it working again? At least that would be my opinion. If there are other opinions what we should speak about, I, should be, uh, I think we should discuss it now at the beginning of the buff. So anyone, anyone would like to get to say something here? Well, um, and, you get a, and anyone who wants to speak gets a microphone. First of all, um, I have been lobbying for it for a while, so I'm glad you're doing it. Uh, I've been speaking to Ross Albury, who is also mm -hmm. a policy maintainer, and he said there were already a lot of changes that presumably was had three acts and just had to be written up and committed. Um, so basically, I guess what we need is some way of making this happen. And some of this, I presume, will end up being basically we uh, having enough committers for the poli policy team. Yeah, basically, there are really two things. The one is there's lots of, I would now say, just grant work, what just needs to be done. There is a patch which is most acceptable, perhaps except formatting or so, which isn't a hard technical decision to do. Um, the policy lives in a git tree, so basically, even as of today, anybody could, could clone the git tree, uh, make for, uh, git format patches of it, and say, here are my whatever, 20 bucks I've closed. And I'm very happy to apply any of the patches which seems reasonable enough and have a bug. Uh, and yeah, so I mean, it's even easier sponsoring that kind of things than normal packages upload. So I'm happy to sponsor any policy additions. And I mean, if, and if the two bugs uh, remain open, which are more difficult, um, it's not an issue for me to whatever, to have a discussion about it. But I really think what we should do, do is get rid of the easy ones, which we are not doing. So I'm totally agreeing on that end. As it's a git tree, and everyone could have access to the git tree. So, any more people needing power? Good. So, other? Others? Yeah, Sam? Hi, um, I guess. I'd like to, to delve in. I think you've oversimplified the policy process in a way that... Um, of course, I did a bit. I understand, but there's a part of it that is, I think, important to remember. Um, going forward, uh, I'm speaking uh, with my TC hat on as um, someone who may, you know, from time to time get called on to, to look at whether the process is working well. Um, when you second a policy proposal, you're doing two things. And I'd like us to remember both of them. Mm -hmm. The first is you're saying, I think this proposal looks good. The second is you're also saying, um, according to the, the, poli the, the process document you guys have written for your internal use, um, that I've reviewed this proce the, the process, and people have had a chance to discuss it, and any objections have been handled. 
So when you second a, a, a bug, you're not just saying, I think it's good. You're saying, we've done a, our, our job of listening to all the people who have concerns. Hey, basically, seconding a policy proposal means, I think the Debian co uh, community has decided it's a good thing to do. Yes. Not Which just I've just, decided, uh, but, but I think the Debian, and that, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, it's quite important. If you second it, it means, I personally am convinced the Debian community has done this decision. So yes, uh, but uh, actually about getting from proposals to seconds isn't the thing we are lacking too, uh, too badly because uh, we can always say there's a proposal and we don't get the second within a certain time, we, we just checked it, so that's the easier one. The thing is really, what do we do? So basically, how do we clear up the queue? Um, and how do we get on with proposals who have, have, have enough, enough seconds and are really are just easy to implement it but don't get implemented? I mean, for the hard ones where we have fights over, we will find out something. In worst case, we, de we, we defer to the committee. So I think that's all not, not what really worries me. But uh, I mean, if I look at the committee list, these are the same people who can fi found it other places in Debian. And I don't think one of us is going to do it uh, to work on the, let's say, um, yeah, uh, on the normal policy patches. Uh, we're all happy to work on the hard ones, but not on the normal ones. So my question is just, is there someone here who has interest in doing that? Uh, how do we get people for that? Any other proposals, how we could, uh, could do it better? Do we require, for example, anyone who would like to get a policy to, uh, proposal in to submit uh, things in the Git format uh, uh, patch uh, uh, style? So we could just apply it. The specificities of the, the, the Debian policy work is that it's also quite English bound and it, it needs competencies to be able to write reasonable technical English and from what I remember it from past discussions there is also quite a lot of discussions about how exactly the thing appears in policy which means that it's not just about having a good idea of how the technical policy should look like in terms of technical terms it's, it's also how it's should be written in proper English. Uh, and that means that the competences to do that are not necessarily the same. I need to even dis disagree a bit about the proper English part because I have, at least from feedback I got, and you can all hear I'm not a native English speaker, um, from feedback as I got is sometimes that if, if English is, is for example, written by me, or I had a lot of fight with Steve about uh, proper English for our release announcement mails, and some of the feedback was that my English was better understanding for non-native speakers. I think the mo most important thing in policy is to be able to understand it. So if I would choose for, an, let's say, um, sufficient English interpretation of someone uh, everyone can understand, and something which is totally perfect in English, but uh, unfortunately, even Germans can't understand it, I know what I'm choosing for. And I'm not lobbying now for the way of English that everybody on the planet can understand, because it would be not be helpful either but something in between. So probably you need a mix of people with good, good English language skills, good technical skills, and who can work up together to find the appropriate mixture of having good English, good technical understanding, and at least understanding for most parts of the projects. Because that's actually, I think, what we aim for. Uh, I can see that Peter is perhaps not happy with what I said. Or is it just over-interpreting your face? Well, so I, I think I think it's quite possible to overstate the requirement of needing knowledge across the project. That was the part I was reacting to because, in fact, um, I think there's a big difference between writing policy and editing policy or managing the process of, mm -hmm. of merging bits of policy into our policy document set. And I've always thought there was great value uh, in both tech committee work and in policy work of making sure the people who best understood that area of technology within the project mm -hmm. were the ones who were sort of helping to articulate, you know, what our policies around that ought to be. So I wouldn't get too hung up about, um, uh, about sort of broad domain knowledge as a requirement for being very mm -hmm. helpful in the policy process. But somebody somewhere does have to understand the technology or you don't get the right ideas to capture to begin with. Yeah, sure. I don't think we have a disagreement about that. <coughs> so, any more remarks, questions, proposals? Is it this, uh, it's a buff, not a talk, so you should speak, not I. Well, what, one, one idea that, that flashes through my mind is, is whether it would make sense to actually have a sprint about it, just to clear the queue and then have a cleaner ground to start from, uh, because it, yeah. Yep. The, the current pile of things looks kind of scary, and it's not super interesting work to dive into very old things and get people back into discussing specific patches and things. 
But yeah. the problem of a sprint is that you, ex you exclude the others that are not there. But yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. But but what you could of or what we could of course also do is just make an let's say virtual sprint saying we take from this or that time and have an IRC channel dedicated to it, so it doesn't need to be a physical sprint. I mean a physical sprint might be better, but uh, even a non-physical sprint. Yeah. And it's really all about what it takes to motivate people to work on things, and if the opportunity of some direct social interaction with others who are also interested in it would help. It certainly seems like uh, working the policy backlog and getting things to a more current state is the sort of thing our DPL would probably be happy to allocate some funds for. So yeah, I'm, I wasn't thinking about the man money angel of it. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I don't mean to harp on that either. I'm just saying that this that that when we start thinking about work in and around the project, and certainly the backlog of issues in the policy queue is one example of work mm -hmm. that's not being adequately attended to. You know, we just heard Mady talk about the, the notion of trying to find ways to incent things around the project that need attention that don't have them to happen. And if the idea that you know, having a sprint or something that gets people more directly socially mm -hmm. engaged with each other to tackle a problem like this, if it seems like that would be helpful, then I wouldn't be too quick to, to back away from it. I don't worry too much, honestly. I mean, if, if, if people feel like they're going to be disenfranchised by not being at a sprint, there have, after all, been lots of time that's already passed where they could have been commenting on those elements of policy or participating in the discussion. So. Uh, it, and I think if we do a sprint, we should at least do it not only not only in presence, but also al allow people to join to the sprint via IRC. Sure. So I mean that's not an additional effort, and it really helps. Sure. So plus one thing <coughs> we might be thinking is also reducing the barrier of entry for new things in policy, because we can also always undo. And if we release a policy that for with something that didn't have enough seconds or I don't know something we had discussed in the sprint and it happens to not be the right thing to do then we have another discussion and we upload a new version of the policy uh, um, as long as we're not too close uh, to the freeze so, can so, work. So, so the next ones are Sam and Sonai. Yeah. I will also be do, doing the queue now. So I guess um, this, uh, I'd like to ask I think an interesting question to ask the room would be are there people who, you know, conceptually might be the kind of people who would work on policy who aren't. Um, and are there things that disincentivize, that, that, that basically when you think about working on policy, are there things that you look at and you go, yeah, I don't want to work on policy because X. So can we ask people, you know, are there reasons you're not working on policy? Okay, yes, that's a good question. First, I would like still to answer a bit to what, what you just said. Um, actually, I think we should only put in policy when, when we are sufficiently convinced that it's good for Debian. Um, what we had been doing in the past was basically to take the, uh, the other things like the developer reference, where we could say, yes, the current ideas of going is this in that direction, but it is not, nothing formal. So if you fail to do that, yeah, you just fail to do it. But I think really for policy, we should rather say, this is now what we really expect everyone. If you're not doing it, your package is definitely buggy. So what we have had in the past is that people said, oh yes, it would be quite nice if we could uh, make this move and put it in policy, but we are not doing it. And I think that is not, not something helpful. <coughs> so we should only move in policy when it's ready. Um, so yeah, and then I have another thing I would like to ask, but I think we should first get an answer to Sam's question. So. Are there any things we could make it easier for people here in this room or for people you might think might be interested to work on policy? The room is larger than, than, than us four. <laughs> you can also answer. <laughs> uh, by the way, is somebody watching IRC here? I'm not doing it. And if well, not, well I, I can answer for myself is... Uh, I'm not doing policy because I'm in, in the TC and I, I kind of tend to think it kind of conflicts because we are the appeal court for whatever policy work could could create as conflict. So it doesn't feel perfectly right to do both. But yeah, plus it's not super interesting. I mean, it's not technical work and it's not necessarily the thing I enjoy doing. So yeah, I don't feel very motivated to, to go into doing policy work. On the other hand, the setting technical policy is the TC work, so it's kind of the same thing anyway. Mm -hmm. So, others? <coughs> others to the question? 
One of, does one of you want to answer? <laughs> or just, okay, then my, my other question is what I said before, do you think it would be too harsh to say uh, we want every, uh, basically before we accept a seconds on a policy proposal, we would like to see the diff in the git format patch way? Or would you think that would be a reasonable thing to do then? I don't have an objection to that. I will note that there are a lot of patches that even if they're not necessarily in Git format patch, they're in patches. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, the difference between Git AM and Git apply isn't really, I mean, yeah, you've got to go come up with a commit comment, but it's not really that hard to but, do that. Um, and those still aren't getting applied. I, I don't think, so. I, I wouldn't say all of that will solve everything automatically, just to, let's put it this way, that it could be part of a solution, but it's not the solution. And of course, anything which now has a little patch, I wouldn't say we are just refusing it for the fact that there is not, is not a Git format patch. So that would be silly, and we're not doing that, I would say. And for me, that's more of an administrative question of, of, of the actual Debian policy maintainers that could handhold people in the process, saying, oh, you have this proposal. Look, I've just made it a Git version of it so that we can all review it in a better way. And by that, I'm not expressing any agreement or disagreement on that. I'm just making a technical change so that we know exactly wh what we're talking about. And then you push it back to, the, to the, p the proposer and say, is that what you mean? And that's more of an administrative thing. And if that's, that's helpful for the process, so we should certainly be doing it. But it doesn't need to be a condition for starting a discussion for something new to be integrated in policy. Yeah, I not, think. not for discussion, but for the seconds, perhaps. But, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, but, but that, that also means that the maintainers could do this administrative work to transform yeah. the whatever the discussion well, output uh, into uh, Git. I think his point is that the maintainers are overloaded. The, 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 the fundamental problem here is the maintainers are not doing, are not, that there is more maintainer work needed than is getting done. So pushing more work onto the maintainers isn't going to make things move faster. Mm -hmm. The claim, and I think it's true, is that we have a large number of things that are adequately seconded that are not moving forward. And that that's the problem we're trying to fix. So adding more tasks to the people who could move things forward, um, I don't think is going to help. I guess my question is, is it, the, the obvious solution to this is more maintainers. Yeah, of, of course. Are, are there any other solutions um, that we're considering, are we basically sitting here looking at what do we do to get more policy maintainers? Is that really the question of this BOF, is how do we get more policy I, maintainers? I, I, no, the question is, well, the question for me is rather, is that the only way we could do, or are there other ways? Yeah. Uh, so basically, I mean, I plan to go to this, uh, to this BOF later on, uh, going, uh, uh, are there things for us to be done in Debian? And I think, yes, I have some of them. So I, I'd like to find people there. But the question is, is it the only thing that we reasonably uh, uh, need are more maintainers? Or are there other ways? Or do we say, well, why do we need policy at all? So still the question is, are we moving in the right direction? Uh, and so that's, that's basically the question for me. I'm not, uh, because I would like to avoid to say, yes, I have these ideas, so I'm just doing it and pushing it and giving nobody a chance to review what, on what I'm planning. But of course, if nobody else has ideas, I'm just looking for more what, uh, whatever maintainers, people helping the maintainers. Um, you don't need to be a, a whatever long year Debian developer to be able to do a lot of useful work on the policy, especially on cleaning up the patches that already exist. Bide? Yeah, I actually have a slightly different sense of what I think the problem is. Um, at various times in the past, we've had sort of enough warm bodies looking at um, the proposed bits of policy, but there's almost a different uh, skill set or a different personality matrix or something required to be the person who actually commits a bunch of those changes. And it almost feels to me like the thing we're missing is someone who's sort of willing to be a strong policy editor right now. Yeah. It, it's, that, it's that sort of last, yes, okay, we've passed all the gates now, you know, let's actually put this into policy. And the problem is you don't want that to happen totally willy-nilly because um, even if there's been good discussion around elements of policy, there's still sort of, I don't know how to put this exactly, there's still sort of an element of style or something associated with sort of that final gating of what actually gets merged into a policy document. And 
Well, Diddy, I understand your point about, you know, we shouldn't be afraid to let things into policy that turn out to be mistakes that we end up having to take back out. On the flip side, I've always liked the fact that our policy sort of trailed best practice and that you know, policy in some sense was the codification of sort of everything we had learned that was actually good about the packaging process and about making a system that really works well and integrates mm -hmm. together. And we don't let policy sort of lead implementation. So there's a, there's a bunch of sort of balancing bits in here, and it has not been surprising to me at times when we were in a situation where it seemed like there were people who were paying attention and commenting on proposed policy elements, but that some of them just you know, didn't actually get there. That there, there are some people in this world, and we, we certainly have had the pleasure of having some of them involved in our recent past, who are really, really good at sort of bringing things like this to closure. And that's not a skill set everybody has. Right. I, I, mean, I, I fully agree to that. So, yes, uh, uh, but, but now on the other side, there are a few patches which are not so hard to, or there are some that's really very important to make sure the wording is okay. There are some patches where you can just say, oh, yeah, well, it looks mostly okay, and if there's some words not perfect, we can just merge up an uh, enhancement later on. So I think we need to find the balance. Uh, but it's not a surprise that the people who are actually policy uploaders, I mean, will, at some times with, with last and me, there were two TC members on the four members list of the maintainers. So it's not necessarily a surprise for it. So, yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, finding someone who is not as deep in the project might be quite helpful as well, I think. Or at least I think we need to, uh, to, uh, to try it out because we ha don't have a chance otherwise to get on it. So, more yeah. Don't we have a second microphone somewhere? Hello? So uh, I, I was at the T Tech Kitty buff yesterday or the other day, and I remember them saying we don't have a lot to do other than finding new members. Would this be a possible area of work where we could? Um I, I, I mean, I just wait because I'm uh, from others to answer because I won't be in the committee long anymore. <laughs> well, the constitution says we can. Six one one. The question is whether it makes sense if you take a look at the project as a general thing for us to do it. I, th I kind of see that as last resort, like if the Debian policy process is so broken that the only recourse, recourse we have is get the TC do that administrative work, and not to dismiss any of that work, but that administrative work nevertheless, uh, then we might get involved. But I really see that as last res recourse, mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be that way. The same also? So, I, I think I would be hesitant politically to do that. Um, that said, I agree with that idea that, that if that needs doing, um, you know, if all, if all else fails, uh, I absolutely agree that it's worth doing and, and I should go and, you know, twist my arm. Um, the reason I'm politically hesitant is we had um, some people who are fairly heavily involved in the, the policy process recently, fairly upset about a TC decision. Um, and I think it's nice to be sensitive to that. I think it's also nice that if we are going to do a bunch of policy work, there's a chance that um, there will be disagreement about something that happens. And it's nice to have the TC one level removed to better handle that disagreement. Um, and so, yes, I absolutely agree that have the TC do it is a fine, is something that is better than not having it done. Um, but I think, it, you know, it would not be my first choice. So now with, with my main uh, ma policy maintainer head on, I would say, so of course, everyone who is on the TC right now uh, is somebody who I would be love to be working on the policy because they, I know they could it. However, I can understand uh, the reasons for not doing so much there. I also have been uh, used to be not uh, being a, keeping a bit of distance from policy uh, with my TC head on. Things will now change. Uh, but yeah, so I can fully understand you there. So I think Martin also. Was just you, you are holding the microphone. I was just given the second microphone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so I think are there more things? Otherwise, I think we seem to boil down really to we need to find people, we need to aggressively find people and thinking about a sprint or whatever else is helping us. Well, m maybe one last word about the, the TC involvement. I think 
what we've basically said is that the TC as a body involvement doesn't make sense unless dot dot dot, but involving the TC members in discussing that the the various patches and 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 all of that totally makes sense, yeah. and we should probably as individuals get involved, uh, but not in front line. I, I think uh, getting input from from the appropriate people, and I think lots of the team members are the appropriate people for different parts of the policy, is a very good thing we should do. Uh, but that's something else as a person who are driving the process. So I, I, I agree it would probably not be good if the TC members or the T as a body would drive the process. However, it, uh, probably there are lots of cases where the input would, would be quite valuable. Sam? I'm just gonna ask this because it's something where um, I'm surprised it didn't come up, and, and I, I'm pretty good at kicking at elephants in the room. Um, so I will note that in the last year and a half, we've kind of found a couple of people who've walked away from the policy process frustrated and upset. Mm -hmm. um, is that actually, so I guess I'm surprised I think we should ask ourselves whether, um, or like talk to people who might be potential new contributors and ask, is that an environment you'd feel comfortable working in or does the, does the you know, level of uh, hostility in some of the discussions make it harder for you to contribute there? I don't, I don't know what the answer is. Um, I know for myself, it would, that, that is not a part of the project I would really enjoy jumping into. Um, but maybe it isn't, maybe for the people who'd be willing to do the work, it isn't an issue. Um, if it is an issue, I think we should work on fixing it. Yes, uh, basically what is up in my mind for the moment, but that might be very wrong. So it's really, I mean, there are things which are uh, in a non-hostile environment, like this is a patch which was just second and nobody disagreed and so on, so we can just apply it. I think that's a non-hostile environment. And there are more, let's say, difficult discussions. Um, if somebody is, is going to say, I'm going to work on policy, but I'm keeping out of all those difficult discussions, that would be still very, be very great. So I think what we should do is speaking up front with people and saying, you should, should choose which part of policy process you want to tackle, just with a uh, or, or with, with, uh, with, uh, uh, non-hostile part, or are you willing to tackle the hostile part? So, yes, Sam? Why do you think you're going to be able to tell which ones are hostile? I mean, like... You, you, you will notice at the moment where they get hostile and you can just say, okay, I'm dropping a system now. Okay. Uh, which might be okay. If, basically, if you have the set of mind to say it's okay to just stop working on this bug because it's getting hostile now and somebody else might take over or not, that's something else. And if you have a feeling, oh, I started with, with, with taking care of that one, now I need to finish it. I think it's okay to say this is getting too hostile, I'm not taking care of it anymore. So, um, and then... Yeah, perhaps it might be better to just uh, share the source with the people who don't mind about being hostile comments or already had, have, not, have, have had their share in Debian uh, so that their experience with that takes the hostile ones and the other ones take the not so hostile ones, or at least until they get, they get hostile. Just an idea, but that really depends for me on the people who are actually doing the work, what they prefer. So I'm not saying you need to do the system that way, but whoever feels comfortable with uh, or, with, uh, or what we should do, whatever is comfortable for the people doing the work. Okay. When one, one silly idea about uh, recruiting would be to use or abuse of the fact that the TC, um, the TC terms expire. And we have multiple in people in that room that have seen or will see their TC term expire. And we should probably talk to them about being becoming policy maintainers. So you want to s source the... We policy maintainers from the TC team. I mean, we, we it's did. two new people per year. But <laughs> <laughs> actually, we already did. There's one right behind you you could start with. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could uh, play tonight in a round of Mao or policy. <laughs> <laughs> so you're absolutely determined to have me not involved in policy? Or something <laughs> I said, or. Oh. Yeah, we, 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 we can find out later on. You can choose whatever you would like to play. Oh, I can't figure out policy until you violate it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you have good ideas. <laughs> so, anyways, I think. So you reverse engineer the rules. Yeah, we did well, that, that, that's what Lintian is about, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, th I, I think the discussion starts to get more funny, but uh, I don't think we get it f a further point. So, so, yeah, so I would propose to just close the session here. Thanks for coming, and if somebody of you who was not saying so much, or of the ones who were saying much, would like to get involved, someone who is watching the video, please feel free to contact me directly on IRC, by mail, whatever. I would really be happy to have more people involved in that area. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.